Hey guys, it's Frank from Leap and Living Art. Today, I'm here, oh God, let's start that over. <laughs> hey guys, it's Frank from Leap and Living Art. Today I'm here to talk to you about this wonderful creature right here. This is a mossy leaf tail gecko. This species is an endemic to the island of Madagascar in the semi-tropical forest there. I'm actually working with two species of mossy leaf tail gecko. That's just a common name. I'm working with Europlatus semidae, or semedi, and Europlatus sicori two very closely related species, both commonly called mossy leaf tail geckos. So stick around and find out how I keep and breed these awesome little geckos. I'm Frank Payne, biology teacher, reptile breeder, and former zookeeper. I'm here to share with you my passion and experience working with these beautiful and fascinating animals. Welcome to Living Art. So I keep my mossy leaf tail geckos in these beautiful leaf habitats and closures. The size that I keep mine in are these larger ones down here. Come on down here with me. These are the 22 inches wide by 17 inches deep and 24 inches tall. This is a great size for one pair of these. Uh, bigger is even better. So if you can go on up to the 22 by 17 by 36, absolutely go for it. But this size works really well. Let's take a look at how I set up the inside of this habitat. I was, this is one of my favorite ones. Because you can see I've actually modified the backgrounds, which a lot of people ask about with our leaf habitats. So I've actually taken some cork panels, some flat uh, cork panels, and put them onto both the back and the sides. And the easiest way to mount them is just screw right through the sides of the habitat and into it, anchored it in very well, just using some about uh, three quarter inch stainless steel screws. And it creates uh, a different background than just the printed tropical background that we see. Those work fine. The geckos do have sticky toe pads so they can climb up the smooth surface, but I wanted to try something different and they blend in very well to that cork background, so I just gave that a shot. I think it turned out pretty great. I used a good number of fairly thick vertical branches going up and down, but also some smaller branches running horizontally and diagonally because they do use smaller branches as well as larger. In general, during the day, they rest in a vertical position, either on the background or on these large logs here, but at night, they're climbing all over in the inside of the habitat. So we want to give them all sorts of variety when it comes to how they can move around. So come on in and see a little bit more. And you can see what I'm talking about with thinner branches and thicker branches. I also have some live plants in here. This is Sansevieria or snake plants, commonly known. They can climb up and down those or all down the side. I do have it fully planted and bioactive. This has been set up for a while. There's tons of springtails and other little critters in there. You can see if I open this up, our bioactive tray all filled up laser cut holes for ventilation to allow for air airflow to go in and then out the top. Normally what I do with my bioactive terrariums is I'll cover the entire bottom with leaf litter. But with these guys, because I'm breeding them, I want to be able to find the eggs and they generally lay their eggs in the leaf litter. So with your platus, leaf tail geckos, I put the leaves in one corner of the habitat towards the front. So that way this is generally where the female will choose to nest. And I can just easily look in here. Let's see if we get lucky today. She doesn't look too skinny. So I don't think any eggs, yep, no eggs. Oh, in good timing, right now the misting system is kicked on. We'll talk more about that later. But I do have this habitat set up with an automatic misting system. This does provide water to the geckos. That's primarily how they drink. And it also will water the plants as well. Let's talk nutrition and feeding. Mossy leaf tail geckos are exclusively insectivores, meaning they only eat insects. What I feed them is crickets, dubia roaches, super worms, mealworms, silkworms. And also sometimes if I can get praying mantises, I will feed them off as well. The key is to provide as much variety as you possibly can and to gut load those insects very well also. I, I primarily give all uh, greens and vegetables and fruit, things that are really high in calcium, and just provide as much variety as possible when gut loading your insects. When it comes to supplementing the, the nutritional uh, content that the insects provide, I mostly use pure calcium powder on every insect feeding, lightly dust the insects with it, and then once a week or every two weeks, I will dust with a multivitamin supplement like Rapashi Calcium Plus or Reptivite. I feed my adult mossy leaf tail geckos three times a week, generally Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but any three days that are spaced out is good. For juveniles, ones that are quickly growing, maybe five times a week or even six times a week feeding them is good. 
it's hard to give you an exact number of insects to feed. In general, feed as many insects as your geckos will eat in about 10 minutes or so. You want to give them enough food, but you also don't want to have so many insects that they run around and disturb the gecko. reptile care is daylight. I do provide daylight for my, for my animals using a LEAP high output LED light fixture. I have a four foot long that, that runs the entire length of it. You can use just a 12 inch one, but I, since I have a full setup here, I use the, the four foot long. Very bright white light is necessary to allow the plants to grow and also to provide uh, daily rhythms for your animals. Because even though they are nocturnal, this is a species that spends most of its time exposed to the light. They do follow those light cues. They do experience some seasonal variation in the wild, and I do try to replicate that in captivity. In the summer, I generally have them about 13 hours of light on, and in the spring and in the fall, about 12 hours of light on, and in the winter, about 11 hours of light. Parameter two is UV or ultraviolet light. Even though they are nocturnal animals, they do benefit and utilize ultraviolet light. Provide ultraviolet light using a LEAP T5 high output light fixture using a 5.0 leaf bulb. They don't need a ton of UV, so definitely don't go 10.0, 5.0 is perfect. Now, you don't probably need to have your uh, UV light fixture on the entire day length. In general, we're thinking around four to six hours is appropriate. There's still a lot of research and work to be done in understanding how much UV light is needed by reptiles, but I would say that it doesn't need to be on all day long. However, if you do have it connected to your uh, daylight, your LED fixture, that won't be a problem if you run it all day long. They are quite good, I've noticed, at regulating their UV exposure by rotating their bodies on a branch to either make it exposed to the UV light or hit in front of it. So they will kind of take care of that on their own. Just don't blast them with it. You certainly don't need 10.0. A 5.0 bulb is just perfect for that. Parameter three is heat. Great news with these guys is that in general, they don't need an extra heat source. In general, normal room temperatures, house temperatures are appropriate for this species. I do try to give them a warm end that's more exposed towards the top of the terrarium that's in the high 70s, like 78 up to about 80 degrees. In the middle spots, the majority of the terrarium in the middle 70s and cooler spots in the low 70s. Now, if it gets a little bit above that in the low 80s, that's not a big deal. However, they are fairly heat sensitive, so I try not to ever let it go above 85 degrees. If it does start to get warmer for whatever reason, you might want to increase misting sessions to tr or fogging sessions to try to bring that temperature down. But for the most part, they don't need an extra heat source. So you give them the T5 light for UV, LED light for daylight, and that's usually enough heat for them. I do provide seasonal variation in heat, and it kind of happens naturally in my room. So all those temperatures that I just mentioned, if they drop by about five to seven, even 10 degrees, uh, during the winter season, that's fine. And a nighttime drop in temperature is very normal, natural, and beneficial. So again, all those temperatures should drop by about 10 to 15 degrees at night, and usually that will happen naturally as your lights turn off. Parameter four is water. These geckos are arboreal, meaning they spend most of their time up in the trees. They're usually not going down to bodies of water to drink. They get pretty much all of their water by lapping up dew droplets, rain droplets, which I do provide with the misting system that comes on usually in the evenings and early in the mornings and oftentimes at least like once in the middle of the night. I can't give you an exact schedule on misting because that will vary depending on your room conditions. A very dry room will require more mistings, a very humid room less so. And just like with heat and with light, it is natural and beneficial to vary that. They do experience a wet season and a dry season in their native Madagascar. So in the summer, spring and fall, I do provide more misting, more water, and in the winter, less so. So you kind of have to play around with that. You want to make sure that they get a full covering and saturation of water, but allow it to dry out in between mistings. You don't want constant wetness, constant moisture, because that can lead to bacteria and mold growth. That's not healthy at all. I do provide them with a very shallow water bowl. I've never seen a Europlatus drink out of a water bowl, but it certainly doesn't hurt to provide it just in case they want to come and get some extra hydration at night. Parameter five is humidity. This is a semi-tropical species and they do enjoy high humidities, especially at nighttime. During the night, I aim for a humidity level around 80 to 100%. During the day, around 60 to 80%. 
Now keep in mind those are guidelines. If you get a little bit below that, a little bit above that, it's not the end of the world. Again, like I said before with the watering, you wanna make sure that they're not overly saturated all day long, but you do want it to get quite wet for periods of the day and especially at night. If you need to increase the humidity, if it's not naturally high enough with the mistings and with the, the plants being watered, then you may wanna add a fogger onto your system to increase humidity, especially at night. Just be careful that it's not being overly saturated. Let's talk handleability and leaf tail geckos as pets. Well, here you see me handling one, but you're probably gonna see this animal jump at some point and I'm keeping a very close eye on her because I don't want her to fall all the way. These are a wonderful animal to observe in your habitat, in your terrarium. I do not handle them very often at all because they honestly just don't make great handling pets. I do it once in a while for, to do a full body check to make sure that they are healthy looking. But other than that, I leave them alone. I enjoy them in their habitats. They don't move much during the day, but they are extremely active at night and wonderful to watch once the lights go out. So that's the main way that you should be enjoying your mossy leaf tail gecko gentle handling like you see here placing a hand in front of it I'm sorry if I'm obscuring your view but I don't want her to jump all the way so I want to make sure that if she does jump that she will land on something and not fall all the way so this is not an animal that you should get to hold regularly but it is one that you can handle once in a while just to check its health but if you want something that you can handle all the time it's something like a bearded dragon or a blue tongue skink or a leopard gecko. These are for the most part look but don't touch animals. Last guys we're going to end with difficulty. I would classify Europlatus sakura and Europlatus samidae, the mossy leaf tail geckos, as intermediate. Now if you get captive bred animals from a breeder such as myself then absolutely intermediate. If you have a little bit of reptile experience they are quite hardy as long as you give them what they need. However, wild caught mossy leaf tail geckos are very advanced and are only for advanced keepers and actually not for keepers but for breeders remember the only reason to purchase a wild caught reptile is if you are a reptile breeder planning to breed it and make it available to other hobbyists other than that you should look for captive bred indi individuals because they are so much hardier and often much better looking as well. Thank you very much guys for sticking around. I hope you found that helpful. We'll have plenty of more animal care videos coming up in our Leap Habitat series. This beautiful girl is getting ready to go back into her terrarium. It's almost nighttime here. She's getting very active and ready to eat. Man, what beautiful, beautiful animals. I highly recommend them. If you haven't already, please do like and subscribe to my channel, Living Art by Frank Payne, as well as to the Leap Habitat's YouTube channel. So thanks again, guys. See you next time.